Don't need money. Don't take fame. Don't need no credit card to ride this train. It's strong and it's sudden and it's cruel sometimes, but it might just save your life. That's the power of love. That's the power of love. Those are the immortal words of Huey Lewis in the news, as true today as it was when it was written. That's the power of love. Or as another person said, nothing you can make that can't be made. Nothing you can save that can't be saved. Nothing you can do, but you can learn how to be you in time. It's easy. All you need is love. All you need is love. John Lennon, smart man, shot in the back, very sad. It turns out a lot of people have written on the subject of love. There are songs about it, movies about it, books, poems, apps. Sure, it's mostly about romantic love. What? Friends listen to Endless Love in the Dark. But there's also families showing each other love. <laughs> or friends. Missed ya. I missed you. I missed you so much. Love is often portrayed as being able to overcome all obstacles and setting aside differences. And growing up in the church, we had our own songs about love. And you know I'm going to talk about Christian rock lyrics. Most of them were about loving God or God loving us, but, but there are a few about how we show love to each other. Like DC Talks, love is a verb. Love is spelled L-U-V, so yeah, it's pretty cool. With lyrics like, hey, tell me, haven't you heard? Love is a serious word. Hey, I think it's time you learned. I don't care what they say. I don't care what you heard. The word love. Love is a verb. The song is about reminding Christians that, that Jesus commanded them to love people by showing them love with their actions. Or, or this newer song by the Newsboys, simply called Love One Another. Love one another, sister and brother. Don't hurt each other. Get off that high horse. Take it to a higher source. Love is the ultimate source. But the ultimate song about Christian love was this hippie song from the 60s that my hippie Christian school teacher used to sing. It said, We will work with each other. We will work side by side and we'll guard each man's dignity and save each man's pride. And they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. But for a lot of people, that's simply not what they experienced. Thanks everybody for watching and liking and subscribing and all that stuff. Uh, there's links for the social media below as well as our Patreon and we really appreciate your support there as uh, a lot of times these topics can get us uh, super demonetized. Uh, we also have a podcast, the Believe It Now podcast, and you can get that on uh, any podcast uh, platforms. The Christian message is very clear. It's all about love. Take every offense, every hurt, let their wrong doing to you be an immediate prompt in your life to love them. You are to love each other as Christ loved you. God means for us to seek our joy in loving people. You are to love your neighbor as yourself. This all people will know that you are my disciples if you have love one for another. By this all people will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. You know why Jesus said those radical commands, go the extra mile, let a person sue you, give? He really meant that should be your default response. And without Christ, you can never love as purely as with Christ. See, the, the, great, di the great difference between the love that the Christian has in their heart by way of the Holy Spirit, how it differentiates from all these other standards or definitions of love that we see in our culture is that it is selfless. And it's only God resident in us that can produce a selfless love. Love stained by sin. Love in the heart of the fallen man is always self-centered. It is always for self, even though it masquerades to be selfless. But like, what does that mean? Oh, it means treating people how you would like to be treated. I think that's in the book. No, like, what does it really mean? It is so important that we not bring our native preconceptions not learned from the Bible of love to the Bible to make the Bible mean what we think love means. If you define love with any other way than a cross, I think you've reduced love to something it shouldn't be. So um, 
the kind of the love chapter we always know is in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. It says love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous, does not brag, and is not arrogant. And I think let's just stop right there for a second because people go, see, if I'm patient and kind, I'm going to keep letting a person do this, which very quickly can drift towards enabling. It's why we've always said don't just memorize a Bible verse. All right, memorize the Bible in context because there's more about love than just being patient. Like John Piper saying that it means that we have to give the coat off our back, like the Bible says, then taking a deep breath and giving a bunch of loopholes. Go the extra mile, turn the other cheek. He meant sometimes, and you must discern what's the loving thing to do. Or this nice seeming former school teacher who goes around teaching children how to deal with topics like whether to show love to someone. But a lot of times, you know, these words are just thrown out, like you're not loving, you know, or, you know, like you're not doing the loving thing. And it's like, mm -hmm. well, what do you mean by love? Showing kindness and being gracious and putting yourself in their shoes. Like several years ago, I was in downtown Chicago and, you know, like a, a gay rights activist was like handing out pamphlets and, you know, I engaged with him and he was like, do you believe in equal rights? And I was like, well, that's such an interesting question. Can you tell me what you mean by equal rights? Because, you know, if I had yeah. said that I wasn't in favor of homosexual marriage, you know, like he would have said, well, you don't believe in equal rights. And it's like, yeah. well, I do believe in equal rights, you know, but I don't believe that that's part of the natural order. I don't believe that's part of God's design. So if we can train our kids to ask questions, there could actually be meaningful discussions, usually not, but sometimes there could be. Yeah. Um, but also for them to be able to see like, oh, it's not me that's not being unloving. It's this idea that's being supported is unsupported. It's irrational. Right. <laughs> this is probably why so many of them have issues with the phrase love is love. As we were interviewing the girls, a truck approached the bridge, stopped, and sprayed over the repainted work. What are you talking about a word just meaning what it means? I get to decide what it means. And if we're really loving homosexual people, we're going to, or people who profess to be homosexual, we're going to tell them about their sin so that they can run to Christ, so that they can turn to Christ as Savior and repent. I think that, that's true love. Let's watch this guy showing his true love. On that day of judgment, Jesus said he will judge this world in righteousness and I know we sound as though we're rude but this woman doesn't know the sin that she's in it sounds foolish to come out here yep ruining people's day at the beach I can't see a pure example of love we love our neighbors at the highest level by sharing the gospel truth with them because we are caring with they were caring for them in their greatest need, which is the state of their soul. And sometimes the best thing for the state of your soul is some peace and goddamn quiet at the beach. So we got to first love God. That's first priority, then second priority, loving neighbor. So what did God say? Homosexuality is abomination. And if I love God first, I have to do that first. That's right. And then comes in the second, love thy neighbor as thyself. Yeah. So then comes the homosexuals into play. I mean, you know how that sounds, right? But I'll love them enough. What? I can show them kindness. I can show them the gospel. Amen. I can show them how to get saved. Right. And what's so amazing is that by doing an act of love like that, they call that hate speech. Yeah, how dare they call it hate speech? Didn't you hear that we define what words are? And within just the last generation or so, we have found ourselves declared to be haters simply because we want to continue to live as Christians who actually believe it. We believe the Bible. No, Charlie, this is about the big man upstairs, okay? Getting boxed out. Oh, it very oh, clearly says in the Bible that gay marriage is wrong, okay? And I'm gonna show you, where's our Bible? Where's our Bible? Where's our goddamn Bible? We don't, don't have a Bible in here. Yeah. Why don't we have a Bible? We never have. It's a bar. But no, 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 it's the sin we hate, not the person. What do we love? We love sinners, we just don't love their sin. The thing is, your sexuality is part of who you are. It's part of your identity. So when you say you hate that part of a person, you're still saying you at least hate part of them. And as Christians, we cannot love perfectly, nor can we hate perfectly, for example, without malice. But God can do both of these things perfectly because he is God. God can hate without any sinful intent. Therefore, he can hate the sin 
and the sinner in a perfectly holy way and still lovingly forgive the sinner at the moment of repentance. So the reason you don't hate them is that you're bad at hating, so you leave that to God? Because I'm going to be honest, I think people have hate down pretty well. I got something for all these homosexuals just walking around here with your pocketbooks, with your tight pants and your bow tie, and you're walking like a girl. You need deliverance. He would give you the shirt off his back. He would do anything he could for you. I mean, he said in church that he wants to put gay people behind electric fences and have them all die out. I mean, what do you think about that? Well, that's not really what he said. He, he said, yes, he said some of that, but he was going to feed them and everything else, and you know that. Twice you're saying that it's okay if you feed them. Well, I'm not. God forbids homosexuality. So should we. Owned by evangelical pastor Rex Cornwell. Right across the street are Linda and Shannon Slimer who are a same-sex couple. People always like to compare them, but listen to a former member explain how they viewed love. Are you religious at all? Yeah. What did your church teach you about love? Love is pretty much somebody that you can't live without. Right, and, and you show love by like being kind to people and you know helping them when they need help. So my family taught me that love is to obey God and to tell other people that they have to obey God too. Because if you don't obey God, bad things will happen to you. Right? <laughs> Sounds pretty familiar. Anyways, let's go back to the really sweet train your kids to be a bigot lady. And to talk through, okay, like objectively, you know, what, who is this child? You know, that they were born a boy, they are a boy. Is it the most loving thing for us to do to tell a lie and to uh, to affirm his subjective feelings or her subjective feelings. Now this is going to this can get wildly complicated. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, and sometimes it involves actually looking at, you know, is is the school, this classroom the best place for our child to be because they might be too young, you know, to on a daily basis walk through this. Do you know what empathy is? No. Well, empathy is putting yourself in other people's shoes so you can feel the way they do. If you hurt someone, empathy makes you hurt as well then why would you want empathy? See, when a man says that he's a woman, he's now made it so that that phrase means nothing. It doesn't mean anything to be a woman. He might as well say that he's a who's a what's it or a thingamadoodle. It's just, it's a, just a word. It means nothing anymore. I'm transgender. I use she, her pronouns. I'm sure you're all totally comfortable with this, right? And so I have a friend that is, uh, uh, was born a male, is now identifying as a female. Out of love for them, should I use the, the feminine pronoun for them? That's like saying, I believe that God made sugar and that sugar is good. And, and yet, out of love for my neighbor, I want to let him put cyanide in his coffee if, if he calls it sugar. <laughs> that's, a, that's a very striking analogy. Refusing to acknowledge who someone is and tearing away their dignity by purposely misgendering them in order to prove your point is one of the most unloving things I can think of. you a woman, this means that it is his will for you to live your life as a woman. If he made you a man, this means he wants you to live your life as a man. Not only so, but he wants to forgive you for your sins so that you might live your life as a forgiven man, so that you might live your life as a forgiven woman. What about those binaries? Because, well, God didn't make those. Beca because... I love that person who yelled, I'm right here. <laughs> this was not his audience. You know who's the one that doesn't love their neighbor as theirself? They are. Right. They are. Yeah, sure. Not us, not, not us. They are. You see that? I know you are, but what am I? You're an idiot! Let's shift for a moment and talk about some of the most vulnerable people you could imagine. Refugees. An individual Christian may be willing to risk everything in order to assist refugees, but that same Christian cannot demand that his neighbors share that risk. We must strike a balance between our God-given personal responsibilities to show compassion and the God-given state responsibility to protect its citizens. So the lesson isn't speak up for the suffering and the people fleeing for their lives. It's some people might be scared, so I guess they just keep fleeing for their lives. And who are these scared people? Oh, it's you guys. 
A 2018 Pew Research survey found that white evangelicals are the religious group least likely to support refugee arrivals in the U.S. And what about children? You at least love children, right? Quit trying to make us feel teary-eyed for the children. Yes, I love children a great deal. But to me, it's up to the parents to do things rightfully and legally. Truly, I say unto you, Whoever welcomes one of these little ones in my name might be letting in a murderer or a drug. Let's get her to a detention center. You know, so we can figure out what's going on. It's really hard to show love to people when your whole life is centered on an us versus them mentality. Romans chapter 13 does say God instituted government to maintain order and to punish those who commit evil and to call the president evil for simply doing what God has given him the responsibility of doing and that is protecting our borders and protecting our citizens. To me, that is outrageous. I remember singing the song, Jesus loves the little children of the world. All the little children of the world, red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in his sight. I mean, I don't think that red and yellow are the preferred terms. And I think we can all agree that, that the color of someone's skin shouldn't change how much we love them. And let me tell you right up front, any of you young people, you want to marry a black man, you girls, don't ask me to do it, because I will not. I refuse. Or look what happened to this woman when she just wanted to sit down and do some work on a nice sunny day. I am clearly not bothering anyone. I'm clearly sitting here doing work. Cell phone video taken Tuesday captures a heated exchange outside of St. Paul's First Lutheran Church in North Hollywood. You go buy that just now for me? That's for you. That's for so unwelcoming. On church property. On church property. All lives matter. I said nothing about any lives, sir. No, and I, I'm sorry, but telling you that's what we have to do she never mentioned race he was the one who brought up all lives mattering but they freaked out on her for being black while sitting but let's look at black lives matter for a second why does john macarthur think it exists what's happening in our culture these days it's not because somebody died in minneapolis it is far bigger than that the bible says Spare the rod, you spoil the child. See, it's not because cops continue to kill people based on the color of their skin. It's that parents aren't spanking kids. Someone give this man a Nobel Peace Prize for solving racism. I can excuse racism, but I draw the line at animal cruelty. You can excuse racism. And yet I hear people saying black lives matter. And they do. God knows they do. They matter just as much as any other life. But if they matter so much, how is it that Planned Parenthood can support Black Lives Matter when there are a thousand little black lives being aborted every day? Okay. So, abortion. You know when you have to get a medical procedure done, but you're really nervous about it and, and you would just love some support? That's a time when some good old-fashioned love would be great. But no, we're, we're going to show uh, some graphic images of fetuses. People in town from all over the country who believe that every child is a human being worthy of legal protection. So we'll be coming out to uh, try to persuade people here to stop killing innocent children. So do you come to these kind of things often, or...? Are you hitting on me at an abortion rally? No. But if you really think it's murder, why aren't you fighting for extensive sex ed in schools? Something that actually lowers abortion rates. Um, Ezekiel and Ishmael? In accordance with your parents' wishes, you may step out into the hall and pray for our souls. Or why aren't you going around handing out condoms on the street? Why aren't you fighting for free or affordable child care, mandatory maternity leaves, any sort of care for that child after they're born? But no, instead we get fake health clinics. This room is for STD testing. There's also a sonogram machine in this room. We also have these little guys over here. This is giant syphilis. Oh my gosh. Do people hold these? Yes. This is Women's Choice Network. They offer free sonograms, STD testing, and information about abortion. But it's not an OBGYN office. CPCs are working really hard to make women feel like they're in a doctor's office. They pick names for the clinics that sound medical. Mm -hmm. They try to make their offices across the street from medical clinics. And threats of violence. 
We live in a nation that commits child sacrifice and the shedding of innocent blood. And it's been happening for 42 years. What we've seen with Operation Save America is a, a radicalization over the last 12 to 18 months. They partnered with another group called Abolish Human Abortion and uh, also forged stronger ties with advocates of justifiable homicide, um, which is the idea that it's okay to use lethal force to defend the unborn. I say tonight we punish Planned Parenthood. I think it's time that abortion doctors should have to run and hide and be afraid for their life. Hey, Josh, do you want to get up and do your call for violence? No. Okay, but you said you want to get people to threaten doctors' lives. I know, I'm going to do it from bed. Okay, Joshy. But let's go back to those shirts for a second. Truth is hate to those who hate the truth. When you've been called hateful so much that you mass-produce t-shirts that say nuh-uh, maybe it's time to question your actions. Abortion is murder. No, it's... It's simply not. Homosexuality is sin. Your team made up the concept of sin and then assigned what gets to be called sin. So, yeah, we don't have to go by your rules. Islam is a lie. Well, yeah, it is a religion. Evolution is a delusion. Okay, uh, what's, uh, what's your hot take on gravity? Feminism is rebellion. There it is. It's almost like it's not about saving a tiny human body, but about controlling an adult human body. Because guess what? Christians can be a wee bit sexist. The Bible is a sexist book, and I'm now putting scare quotes, uh, I'm now, at this point, uh, putting scare quotes around sexist. And the Bible is a perfect book, then it must follow that there is some sense in which these purportedly sexist attitudes are actually virtuous. We should endeavor to live by them. Gross. The 40 Greater Tabernacle members voted Dr. Shonda Reynolds Christian pastor after their last church leader passed away. I was called and I just believe that God opened up the door and you know, that's how it happened. But with the letter in the door, the church was kicked out of the County Baptist Association. The vote Monday was 73 to 4, a no tolerance policy for a female pastor. Gross. Let's we'll say it out loud, but a female leader is no. just... Right? Doesn't sit well with me. It feels, me chill. It feels like un-American, maybe. Yeah, it's un -American. I'm not saying every woman can be the epic, the epic trophy wife of all time, like Melania Trump. I'm not saying that at all. Now, most women can't be trophy wives, but you, you know, like her, maybe you're maybe a participation trophy. I don't know, but all I can say is not everybody looks like that. Amen. Uh, um. Yeah, gross. So you're sitting here calling me fat? Oh, you don't think you are? No, because I f***ing love who I am. A North Carolina teen is speaking out after being body shamed at her church. I will never come back to this church because of how much you are disrespectful. You are so disrespectful. Super gross. God exercises his rule over Christ in his humiliation and incarnation. Christ exercises His authority and rule over us, and men the same over women. Super, super gross. Okay, so they seem not to love people even though they totes do, but those are sinners, or, or at least others. At least they love people in their own church, right? We have pastors over churches. Does church discipline go out of existence because you're always turning the other cheek? Yes, you should be judging everyone within the church, but those are on the outside, Paul says, of God judges. Wait, that's the opposite of what we've seen here, but, but okay. Now here's the instruction. Remove the wicked man from among yourselves. Not remove the wayward brother. Remove the wicked man, the so-called brother. He's not a true brother. To me, it seems like the way a lot of churches do discipline is really just to get people in line and, and to not question their authority. Not going to practice church discipline or it is going to ignore church discipline. It has basically looked at its master and said, I will not obey you. And I have heard people say, they've said it, they just didn't realize what they were saying. When they say something, we're, we don't discipline anybody here, we're going to love people. 
as opposed to the Christ who commanded you to discipline people? Like when my dad called out his pastor for, for what he thought were theologically questionable teachings. Then the pastor got upset and told the congregation that my dad's illness was an addiction because he liked the attention, so he allowed it to stay in his body. But I'm sure the rest of what that pastor was teaching was great and my dad was wrong. Pastor Derek Mike states that Miss King has shown non-support towards the church in the areas of, quote, constant and consistent financial and physical participation. She was stunned. Um, she was disappointed. She was shocked. Simmons says his aunt was considered sick and shut in for several months, which explained her lack of attendance. He also says his aunt has gone above and beyond in the past to financially support the church. I'm not saying that no one has ever felt loved by their church or, or by church members. I'm not saying that, that what I'm doing disproves your God or, or debunked your religion. Here's what I am saying. To someone who hasn't felt that love, your feelings are valid. To someone who has felt hated by churches or people in churches, your feelings are valid. If you've been disowned, shunned, or hurt by churches or church members, your feelings are valid. You don't need to change who you are, no matter how much someone yells at you. And if you're part of a community right now that is making you feel unloved and unworthy, it is more than okay to walk away. And despite what some people think, we only get one shot at this life. Spend it around people who love you. Love people around you. It's okay to set boundaries. For some people, it can be hard to walk away for something that they have been taught as the ultimate authority. Because he is the one who created us. He has the authority to tell us how we must live, which he has done in the Holy Scriptures. So that's my standard. I'm a Christian. I want to live and, I want to live and die by the Scriptures. I want, I want to take my stand there. That's the standard that I appeal to. But there is freedom in the unknown, and there is freedom and hope in the thought that I can just love people without redefining what that word means, despite what a church or a book has told me. Somebody who's divisive, God hates them. Not just what they do, Scripture says them. You can't go but six chapters into your Bible. And what happens? God kills every man, woman, and child on the face of the earth except eight souls. Love. Real honest, pure love goes so much further than any hate. I found it is the small things Everyday deeds of ordinary folk that keeps the darkness at bay. Simple acts of kindness and love. Thanks so much for listening this far. If you know someone who might like it, send it their way. And, and I want to say a huge thank you to Sam for recording that version of They'll Know We Are Christians. I really appreciate you doing that, and I appreciate you, and you're an inspiration, and uh, I love you. Work, 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 Sky Moon. <laughs> we used to be real nice about it. You could still be very nice about it. You're choosing not to be. Not anymore.